Guild Wars 2 is a gigantic game with loads of content and tons of different features. And sometimes the game doesn't always explain to you that these features exist. So today I want to talk about these secret hidden Guild Wars 2 features. Now I realize that there are already a lot of videos out there like that. And if you go to the comment section of these videos, you'll always see the exact same comments. Nice try YouTuber, but I already knew about all of these features. So today I am taking on a challenge. Even if you are like me and you've been playing this game every day for the past 10 years, I want there to be at least one feature in this video that you didn't know about. Let me know in the comments if I succeeded my challenge. Um, if there are any comments saying that you knew all of them, I will be very sad. <laughs> Let's start off with a feature that actually blew my mind. Recently, someone in my Twitch chat mentioned to me that you can click the health bars in the events UI, those are the health bars in the top right of your screen, to quickly select enemies. So if there's like a boss you are fighting and you see the health bar in the top right, you can click this health bar to quickly select the boss. I've been playing this game for like a decade and I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> there is nothing in the game that suggests this works, but it totally does. I've sort of been trying to spread this around recently. I've been talking about it on my streams a lot. I even mentioned it on a tea time episodes. It will select that enemy. I Holy did not know. Shit. You can type slash emote list to get a list of all emotes available in the game. This is not super useful, but I guess if you forget about an emote, you can quickly find us. In the achievements window, you can press the little gear next to the search fields. Here you can add an achievement filter. You can for example use the filter to only display achievements that will give you an end of dragons mastery points, or only achievements that give you a title. A lot of people know about the snap ground target setting. If you turn this on, all of your AoEs will automatically get centered on your current targets. <laughs> this is really useful if you're like me and you miss all of your grenades. With this setting, all of your grenades will just get centered on your targets. Now what a lot of people don't know is that there are actually keybinds to quickly turn the setting on or off. There's one keybind that toggles it and there's another keybind where you have to hold it down for the setting to be active. Personally, I bound this to one of the buttons on my mouse so I can very quickly center my grenades and make sure I don't miss and then when I want to put a water field somewhere else I can just let go of it. In a wallet menu there is sometimes a tiny little button to the right of a currency. If you press this button the game will show you where in the world you can get it. Here is a tip for all the musicians that are watching. As you probably know, the legendary weapon, the minstrel, is also a playable instrument. As long as you have the minstrel unlocked on your account, you can walk up to an NPC to get the novelty unlocked, and the novelty is what allows you to play music on it. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that just by crafting the minstrel in the Mystic Forge, you already unlock that novelty. <laughs> This means that you can craft the minstrel, get the novelty unlocked as your crafters, and then sell the minstrel on the trading post before you soulbound it. This way you can save a, a lot of goals. Most of you probably know that in the achievements window you can press the little eye icon next to an achievement to add it to your watch list. The achievements that you put on your watch list will then show up in the top right of your screen. Thus, what a lot of people might not know is that if you go to the watch list in your achievement panel, you can drag the achievements to change their order. Only the first couple of achievements in your watch list will show in the top right of your screen, so by reordering them you can pick which ones you care about the most. One of the reasons that people love their Mistlock Sanctuary passkey is that it allows you to teleport back to where you came from. But not everybody has the Mistlock Sanctuary. A free alternative is the Obsidian Sanctum in Worlds vs Worlds. This place has a merchant, a trading post, a bank and more. And it also allows you to teleport back to where you came from. So if you're in the middle of doing something, you can just go to the Obsidian Sansom in Worlds vs Worlds, take something out of your bank, and then press the leave the mist button to go back to where you came from. And this next one is really cool. If you're looking at items in a trading post, you can type the phrase I am Evan Nashblade to go into the special Evan Nashblade mode. Evan Nashblade is the owner of the Black Lion Trading Company, so by using his password you can access his super secret mode. Basically, it allows you to see a lot more items at the same time. It is a little bit laggy, but if you use the training post a lot, this can be quite useful. It even stays active if you switch characters or relock. If you want to turn it back off, just once again type the phrase I am Evan Nashblade into the search field and it will turn off. 
If you are the commander of a squad, you can send squad broadcasts by using the little chat window at the top left of your screen. You can quickly type into this chat window by pressing shift enter, and you can even type slash one, slash two, slash three to send broadcasts to specific subgroups. If you play this game a lot, you probably already knew about that, but here is something I discovered just yesterday. If you press the little icon next to the chat field, you can toggle the chat field between being either completely invisible or slightly translucent. That does not seem very useful, but maybe you didn't know about it either? <laughs> Let's very quickly go through some features that are a bit more well known, but very useful. You can right click the chests that appear on the bottom right of your screen to save some time. If you right click them, the pop-up doesn't show up, but you just instantly get the loot. It is worth noting that this doesn't work for every single chest in the game, but it does work for most of them. Also, a surprising amount of people doesn't know that you can right-click your skills to swap the mouse. This is a lot faster than trying to click that tiny little arrow. When you're doing map completion, it can be really tricky to find the last point of interest or vista that you still need. As long as you aren't zoomed out too much, you can mouse over the thing that you still need in the top left of the map screen, and this will then light up any of the things you're still missing in the areas that you have in covers. This is super useful for finding that final point of interest you still need. If you are using the Siege Turtle together with someone else in the Gunner Seas, you can actually use waypoints on the same map and take your gunner with you to that waypoint. This can be really useful in guild missions. If one person doesn't have the right waypoint, you can just like go get them and then teleport with the Siege Turtle. If you make a squad and then press the private squad toggle, it will hide your commander tag from other people on the map. People in your squad can still see it, but other people will not. Let's get back to some more obscure features. If you store your living world's portal scrolls in the bank, it can be kind of annoying to use them, because you'll take them out of the bank, use them, and then they're stuck in your character's inventory instead of in your bank. You can get around this by taking out your portal scroll, using it, and then while you have the portal scroll dialogue open, putting it back into your bank, and then the dialogue will still work to teleport you somewhere. You can draw on the map or the minimap by holding down shift and right click. A lot of players actually thought this got removed, but ArenaNet just moved it to a really obscure keybind. You can use the slash time command to get the current Tyrion time in your chest. You can use dash map load info in the command line arguments of Guild Wars 2 to get nerdy statistics as you load into a map. If you don't know what command line arguments are, basically just edit your Guild Wars 2 shortcuts Add a space behind targets and then write dash map loads info. You can press the little heart next to items in the trading post to add them to your favorites list. This even works in Evan Nash Blade mode. You can then press favorites on the left side of the trading post to find these items again later. I personally use this for food items that I regularly buy. We're almost at the end of the video, but I've got a pretty good one saved for last. If you are replaying episodes in your story journal, they will get this little white star next to them if they have any progress. If your episode has any progress in it, that little star will just not go away. <laughs> it's not really a big deal, but if you're replaying a lot of episodes at once, for for example Living World Returns, it can be a little bit annoying to see all these white stars next to all of your episodes. Here's a trick to get rid of them. First, press the replay button on an episode with a white star. This will reset its progress back to zero. If you then quickly switch to a different episode, the white star will disappear. Both episodes have to be in the same season. You can keep doing this for lots of episodes, but <laughs> unfortunately, you will always be left with at least one at the end. If that's one really bothers you, I guess you'll just have to go and complete it. And that was the last one on my list. I am extremely curious if there was at least one on this list that you didn't know about. Did I succeed in my challenge or did you already know about all of these? Then I'll be very sad. If you like talking about Guild Wars 2, definitely subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to do videos a little bit more regularly. And also, you can stop by my Twitch stream almost every single evening to just chat about Guild Wars. I'll see you again tomorrow on the stream. Bye everyone!